hello this is mokamami here bringing you another video and this one is about severe weather and masculinity so i'm going to tell you guys a little story um about what's kind of been going on here in the state of texas some of you may have seen it on the national news but we've been having some hail and some snow that's very atypical because temperatures in the winter in this part of the country usually are around 50 degrees we usually don't get too much weather below freezing and as a result we really don't have things like salt trucks or snow plows in in our communities because um severe weather is just so rare uh severe winter weather is just so rare we do we do have other things we do have severe thunderstorms we do have tornadoes so with that being said, um, we had a hailstorm and some of the power lines were down. A lot of the hail had covered many trees and then those limbs ended up breaking and taking down power lines, taking out some transformers. And there were transformers and power lines down throughout the entire city. So a few of the neighbors get on the app, the neighborhood app. Um, and start kind of coordinating. So the Ford guys, my husband is in that crew, the Ford guys decide that they're going to go and go around and talk to people who has gas cans um, because they're going to go and make a run and fill up gas cans so that people can power their generators. The Dodge guys say, hey, you know, we're going to go... Um, get together and we're going to go to the agricultural supply store or the feed store and we're going to go get cords of wood because there's a lot of these this is a, these are older houses in these neighborhoods that have been renovated so a lot of them still have fireplaces so i'm going to go and find out who needs wood who needs starter logs who needs um creosote logs or whatever you might need um and the and the dodge guy's going to do that the Chevy guys are going to go out, hey, we're going to go to the beverage distributors and to some of the grocery stores, and we're going to get ice. We don't know how long these rolling blackouts are going to last or when they're going to get our transformers back up. So at least this way, people have ice uh, to stock their coolers, to keep their food cool, and if they need um, any groceries or, or things like that. So then there is the bmw guy the high value man who says i'm going to get on my cell phone and i'm going to call the power company and i'm going to bitch and moan to the power company and tell them that they need to fix our transformer now mind you transformers are out there in the whole city there are blackouts out in the whole city okay everyone here is struggling for electricity and you want to get on the phone and face busy signal after busy signal with the power company and bitch and complain about not having electricity. So my husband goes to BMW guy and was like, hey, BMW guy, you have a gas can? You, you need anything for your generator? BMW guy is like, I don't have a generator. You don't have a generator, BMW guy? You got a, what, a $60,000 car? And you and your son be wearing the freshest to death Jordans and in the middle of Tornado Alley, you ain't got a damn generator? Okay, BMW guy. Dodge guy goes up to the BMW guy and says, hey, I'm about to go to get some wood. You know, everything okay with your fireplace? Your flu is working okay? What's a flu, says BMW guy. How do I check that, says BMW guy. I don't know anything about fireplaces says BMW guy. So you got a house with a damn fireplace and never ever bothered to get your flu or your chimney inspected or never knew that you needed to get your flu or chimney inspected. Now think about this. Oh no, I'm, I'm, I'm from Virginia or, or wherever, the Maryland, D.C., Virginia area. So I, I never had no fireplace. My Puerto Rican husband who's from a tropical island <laughs> knew to get our fireplace and flu inspected and chimney inspected when we bought the house. From a tropical island where the average temperature is 80 degrees, knows how to start a damn fire and work a fireplace, okay? My Puerto Rican tropical island living husband who ain't never, who had, who was at least in his 20s before he experienced weather under 
60 degrees. That guy knew how to check a damn fireplace, knew to get a fireplace checked and inspected, and knew how to work a, figured out how to work a flue. Come on now. So Chevy guy is like, do you need ice? You know, for your for your cooler or for your now Chevy guy has always got a cooler. Cause Chevy guy is a he's an avid hunter and fisherman, so he stay having a cooler. You know what I mean? He stay having ice. He stay. Chevy guy, you know, love Chevy guy. We love Chevy guy. He's a great neighbor. Love him. Okay. So he's like, yeah, I can go use some ice. In fact, let me get my wife's Toyota Rav Four and see if I can help you other men take care of the neighborhood. And they're like, no, that's all right. <laughs> Dodge guy's looking at his Hemi engine, right? Ford guy looking at his EcoBoost or his Triton V10. And you're talking about your wife's Toyota RAV4? Come on now, BMW guy. <laughs> you, you can't run with the big boys in your wife's Toyota RAV4. You stay home. <laughs> you stay home. And then to make things worse, right? He's like, uh, you know, we have gas stoves in our area. We have gas stoves, gas heat, a lot of the homes. So um, my husband, of course, had the striker thing so we can boil water. So what we were going to do is we're going to make some hot tea and then we're going to go run into the two, to the, some of the elderly couples, the elderly families that live in our, our neighborhood. So BMW guy, not even think about the old people. He not even thinking about them. Not even thinking how her old folks is doing over this. Now the old folks look like us, okay? The old folks don't look like the rest of the neighborhood. But he not even think about them. So he got all his kids and his wife sitting in this BMW on their cell phones, taking turns using the charger. And I said, bring the kids in the house. I mean, we have heat. We got a fire going. Let the kids come in the house. Let the kids have something to eat. Let the kids drink some hot chocolate with my kids. Whatever. So his kids are sitting in my house at this point. Um, my husband's getting more gas for the generator. Chevy guy, Dodge guys getting more wood, all this stuff. Um, so we go to Miss Brenda. You know, she's one of the old, elderly ladies. We bring her some hot tea and lemon. We go to Mr. Ernest. We bring him some hot tea and lemon. And Dodge guy is with us. Um dropping off some wood. Now, Mr. Ernest, he's from a different generation. His, his flu was already open and ready for, you know, he already had starter logs. He already, he just got an extra, and they did help him. I will give them credit. I will give Dodge Guy credit for helping him bring, like, the cords of wood actually into the house and paying for it because Mr. Ernest is on a fixed income. But you got Dodge Guy taking better care of Mr. Ernest than BMW Guy who looked like Mr. Ernest, who is going to be Mr. Ernest in 30 years. But Dodge guy got Mr. Ernest. <laughs> My Puerto Rican husband got Miss Brenda. You see what I'm saying? Like, this is what I'm saying. Like, we don't need to be dragging them about cops and crime and illegitimate pay. Drag them on basic masculinity. Basic masculinity, okay? I'm going to give you another story, okay? This was happened a few years ago when I was working at a hospital, just part of, like, temporary staff. So in this hospital with this temporary staffing, um, there is a patient on CVVHD, which is continuous dialysis. Now, this is over the holidays, so this is the night shift, and this is ICU. So you have... We were coming up on her day off, and we have to find a replacement for her next night shift. So this woman decides to come in on her day off to take care of this patient. Because it's very hard to find a night shift ICU nurse who can operate CDVHD over the holidays. So this woman comes in. So, of course, during the holiday potluck, she hadn't cooked anything. This is her sixth, one, two, three, four, five, sixth. 12 hour shift in a row and security guard comes by and was like y'all black women y'all never cook y'all black women never cook and some of these women who have this internalized misogyny y'all like to call them pick me i hate that word so i will say this internalized misogyny i cook i know how to cook i cook i cook 
stop. See, I'm a, I cooked. I cooked with the security guard, man. I cooked. So, <laughs> I go to, I, I'm not even going to get involved in this conversation uh, at the level he wants me to get involved in, okay? What I'm going to say is, you know, excuse me, Mr. Security Guard, man. Um, I think that the sensor in my car is off. Would you happen to have a tire pressure gauge so I can just check my tire pressure? Because it just seems like it might be a little off. It just, I think that, no, 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 I ain't got no tire pressure gauge. I ain't, I ain't got nothing like that. So next time I hear him at the nurse's station talking about, y'all black women, y'all don't cook. That's why y'all don't cook. Black women, y'all don't cook. No, the black women don't cook. So I say, excuse me, Mr. Security Guard, man. I think I went and I left the light on in my car. That back light, you know, that back passenger light. And sometimes it drains my battery. Would you happen to have any jumper cables? Any jumper cables that might be able to help me when I get off this 12-hour shift to make sure that I'm, I'm, I can, I can stop my car? No, no, I ain't got no jumper cables. Well, what about any, anything? You have any, anything, like anything that might help me? Be able to deal with my car, you know, help me, help me with my vehicle. No, no, I don't, I don't have a car, so I don't have none of that stuff. Oh, okay, so you don't have a car. Okay. All right, thank you, Mr. Security Guard. See, you don't have to get in arguments with them. You don't have to get in arguments about them, with femininity and masculinity. You don't. You know, and every time I heard a little Mr. Security Guard man say some old slick stuff out of his mouth, Y'all black women, y'all black women, this, and y'all black women, y'all attitude, y'all black women, blah, blah. Excuse me, Mr. Security Guard, because we were renovating at the time. We were, we were renovating. Um, and so I said, you know, I have a very heavy mirror I want to hang, but um, I don't have a stud finder, because I know i got to drill it into the stud of the wall. I just can't hang it anywhere, because I know the drywall, it just ain't going ain't gonna to hang, hold it up. So, and I would hate to buy a whole stud finder for one project. Would you happen to have a stud finder that I could borrow next time I'm on shift? No, 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 I ain't got no stud finder. I ain't got no stud finder. Okay, thank you, Mr. Security Guard. Next time I hear him talking about these black women this and these black women that. Uh, excuse me, excuse me, Mr. Security Guard. Um, I got a question. See, we got to redo the drywall in the bathroom because, you know, it was molded out and whatever, this house we're renovating. So... I was just kind of wondering, do you know anything about like dry core or taping and mud in? Or you know anything about any of this? You know, can you can you just give me some guidance as far? And I'm showing in the pictures on my phone, right? Because clearly my husband has got this under control. Like me and my husband have this renovation project under control. Clearly we do. But I'm just trying to make a point. And it's a point that is going over his head. One of the janitors had to put him on game. Like, yeah, dude, she's embarrassing you in front of these nurses. Because as you're insulting her and black women on their womanhood, she's insulting you in a backhanded way on your manhood. It took him about three, four times of me doing that before he realized that I was insulting his manhood. Because he didn't know enough to be insulted. And I really want you to think about that, black women, okay? That these men can talk all day about your lace fronts all day about your sew-ins but ask them since this quarantine and all these food shortages have y'all had any crops yielded any crops yet for the black community to make sure that we don't starve to death y'all over here all day all day talking about some prison to public school pipeline and with more and more kids being homeschooled than ever before. Have y'all attempted to even start something? Have y'all even attempted to make sure that these boys is out here getting what they need academically? That's what I'm saying. insults in the world. They have, they can look at the speck in your eye and not the plank in their own. They can talk all day about how fat you are. But don't realize that I'm going to leave the study in the chat, in fact, uh, about how 60% of them over the age of 44 got some form of heart disease. That's why this pandemic's been hitting them so hard. They said, oh, the pandemic only hit people who had pre-existing conditions. They coming in here with blood pressures. 216 over 104. That didn't happen yesterday. They got BMP and LDLs higher than 
getting a credit score, honey. Talking about they ain't got no pre-existing conditions. No, you won't have you haven't been diagnosed for your pre-existing condition. I took your blood sugar and it's registering maple syrup, okay? <laughs> what? What? You walking around with pre-existing conditions. I'm looking at your chest x-ray and it looked like a daggone crime scene. Oh, but the healthcare system's racist, right? You are Popeye's chicken sandwich away from a damn heart attack and you're gonna talk about what somebody weighs? You better get up out of here. So my advice to you, reward masculinity when you see it. When a guy comes around with some light D, ice D, lock D icer, excuse my language, um, and, and an ice scraper for your windshield, say thank you. If you got a good man in your life, bring him a cold beer and let him know how much he is appreciated. Because I sure enough did that with my husband. I'm like, I'm, listen, I got you, baby. <laughs> Today, whatever it is you want, I got you because you have shown, you know, you have shown, your, you have shown and proved that you are the man that this community and that this family needs for you to be. And I am grateful for that. I made, listen, I made his Valentine's Day worth it because this is not, this is not something, listen, you guys have to reward masculinity when you see it. Reward masculinity when you see it. So instead of looking for Coco a smooth BMW driving, quote unquote, high value man. Maybe you might want to give Ford truck guy a try. Maybe you might want to give Dodge truck guy a try. You got to buy that thing outright because ain't nobody buying 8,000 pounds of torque and ain't doing no work with it or don't have a hobby that makes it worth it. So when you see that AC truck guy, know that that is somebody who ain't leasing nothing. All right. Know that when you see these Toyota Tacomas, they cost just as much as some of your foreign luxury cars. But you got to buy it. You ain't leasing it. You got to own it. Okay, you ain't turning that back in 24 months. You can drive them as long and as hard as you want. And I also want you guys to look at something else. You trying to look at Cocoa Butter Smooth and these designer labels? Check out Duluth Trading Company. Those clothes ain't cheap either. And men who shop there? <laughs> they got work to do, honey. They got work to do. That's one of my husband's favorite stores. You know, that's, that's masculinity for you. That's manhood. Not all these boots in purple labels, <laughs> Gucci belts, and Louis Vuitton slippers. It might be a pair of Tacova's boots or Justin boots, right? Or any of these Caterpillar or Carhartt work shirts. That might be where the value actually is. The value is in the manhood and in the masculinity, not in the labels and the name brands. Because Coco Butter Smooth BMW guy can't help you when your car's in a ditch. And in the meantime, And in the meantime, I'm also going to link in the description box, Jai Marie's Amazon curated shop. She has a uh, automobile emergency kit that she suggests for if you ever get stuck on the highway or you ever get stuck in severe weather yourself. I'm also gonna, I'm also going to link Sweet Potato Soul. She has some great ideas on healthy, nutritious and affordable non-perishables you can keep in your pantry in case you are expecting severe weather in your area because in our community the masculinity may not be with the people who we expect it to be with masculinity may not be
be with the people who we expect it to be with. So this is Mocha Mommy, wishing you the best and wishing you safety. And I'll see you in the next video.